All right, here we go. Chapter 1 on exploring data. Section 1.1, we're going to be looking at analyzing categorical data. We're we'll just, we'll just spend time looking at that type of variable. So after this section, we all should be able to display, we should be able to display the categorical data, categorical data with a bar graph. So we have to be able to make bar graphs. Identify what makes some graphs of categor categorical data deceptive. So we're going to look at the way people are trying to deceive you by using uh, graphs of categorical data. Uh, well, and that's where we'll stop on day one. Day two, we'll pick up and look, to look at how to calculate and display marginal distributions of a categorical variable from a two-way table. And we'll also look at calculating and displaying conditional distributions of a categorical variable for a particular value of the other categorical variable in a two-way table. Okay. And then we should be able to describe the association. Uh, another word for that is the relationship between two categorical variables. All right, so day one will be relatively short. We'll get right to the point. Categorical variables place individuals into one of several groups. Again, remember groups or categories. Okay, so we see down here below, it's the same data. We got a frequency table down here uh, that just lists the counts of each of these different types of formats of radio stations. Where this is a relative frequency table, and a relative frequency table displays percents. So Going back here, uh, identifying the variable. The variable is the format of the radio station. Those variables take on different values, uh, such as adult contemporary, adult standards, oldies, rock, etc. Right. In a frequency table, we have counts. In a relative frequency table, we have percentages. So each of those lends themselves to a, uh, a, a better graphical display, a frequency table uh, will probably be best to be displayed uh, on a bar graph. Okay, uh, So uh, what that would look like here is a bar graph with each of the categories listed down below. Again, each bar is the same width. And also notice that uh, these bar graphs start at zero to avoid any deception. If these were all to start at a thousand, uh, we'd have a lot of deception in the graph. Uh, we'd first of all miss the contemporary hits, and some of these graphs would uh, not be uh, uh, as comparable to the others. So in fact, the adult standards compared to the adult contemporary, if we just cut it off at a thousand, it would look like this this graph this bar right here would be twice as much as what this is. But it's really not if we started at zero. So again, make sure uh, on these bar graphs uh, that the y uh, axis starts at zero is to avoid deception. Um, in a relative frequency table, uh, probably the best display for that is going to be your pie chart, where we just take each of the different percentages uh, and make them a slice of pie on our pie chart. Uh, Excel does a very good job of this, um, and other spreadsheet software does a really good job of this as well, too. So we want to be doing this by hand. Uh, if we had to, we'd have to calculate uh, what that degree is here and take 15% of 360 degrees to get that angle, and then get our protractor out and measure these different angles. So uh, we won't be doing that. Uh, we'll just be using Excel uh, or um, in most cases, just doing a rough estimate uh, in our homework. Okay, so bar graphs or graphs, good and bad. Bar graphs compare several quantities by comparing the heights of bars that represent the two quantities. So again, as I spoke earlier, our eyes react to the area of the bars as well as to their height. So again, uh, make sure when you draw a bar graph, make the bars equally wide. And I'll also say it to Sue to make sure that you start. Uh, the y-axis at zero to avoid some of that deception uh, with the, the heights of the bars. Um, those who uh, read the USA Today paper, it's always tempting to replace bars with pictures. They're called pictographs. They look prettier, 
but they um, don't always represent the same area uh, as we read the bar graph. So um, do not do, don't do it. Don't do, uh, use pictures or graphs. And again, are called pictographs. Okay. So two important lessons to keep in mind and Lesson 1.1, day one, beware of the pictograph and watch those scales.